in a series, and we're asked to determine um, its interval of convergence, and then to you know, approximate a few values and see if um, those estimates are close to the, or if we can expect those estimates to be close to the actual values or not. So the power series that we're given is right up here. And to determine the interval of convergence, we'll use the ratio test. So let's look at the limit as k goes to infinity. Uh, the k plus 1 term, so 5 to the k plus 1 times x minus 1 to the k uh, plus 1 over k plus 1 squared. And multiply that by the reciprocal of the um, kth term. So 5 to the k times x minus 1 to the k over k squared. And let's rearrange so this simplifies a little bit more easily. Uh, well, excuse me, I should be multiplying by the reciprocal, or one, so multiplying by 1 over that. So this will give us um, 5k, absolute value of 5k plus 1 over uh, 5k. And we'll have x minus 1 to the k plus 1 over x minus 1 to the k. And we'll have k plus 1, or we'll have k squared over k plus 1 squared. Right. So now this one we can. Rewrite again one more time. So we have 5 to the k plus 1 over 5k. 5k cancels out and leaves us with just 5. And here, uh, x minus 1 to the k cancels out, so we're just left with a single x minus 1 term. And here, if we rewrite this, um, the squared, squaring the entire thing, and we can divide the numerator, um, each term in the numerator and denominator by k. That gives us 1 over 1 plus 1 over k. So, of course, now when we take the limit, um, these terms are just constant with respect to k. We have 5 times the absolute value of x minus 1. And here, this term is going to go to 0, so we multiply by the absolute value of 1. So this is equal to 5 times the absolute value of x minus 1, which uh, now we want to know the values um, of x for which this is less than 1. Those are the values that it'll converge for by the ratio test. So this means that absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 fifth. So this means that. Um, oh, x is less than four fifth or greater than four fifths and less than six fifths. So interval of um, so radius of convergence, I guess I'd say, is one fifth. Correct? Yes. So radius of convergence, I'll say write the answer here. R equals one fifth. Now, of course, this means that um, the interval of convergence is uh, four fifths to six fifths. Well, possibilities for the interval of convergence. Um, so we know for sure that it will converge on four fifths uh, to six fifths, and that might be all that it converges on. Um, but we don't really know about the endpoints. It might converge on the endpoints. It might not. So of course, the other values would be, or other possibilities, are, could converge on both endpoints. Uh, it could converge on just the left-hand endpoint, uh, or it could converge on 
just the right-hand endpoint. Of course, in addition to everything um, strictly uh, greater than four-fifths and strictly less than six-fifths. So these are the four possibilities. Okay, so now we want to use the first three terms um, of the sequence, to, or the series, to estimate uh, the series at 1.1, 1.01, and at 2. So the first three terms of the sequence are going to be, well, uh, 5, so when k equals 1, we'll have 5 times x minus 1 over 1 squared, and we'll add 5 squared over 2 squared times uh, x minus 1 squared. And finally, we'll add 5 cubed over uh, 3 squared times x minus 1 cubed. So we're going to use this as an approximation to p of x. So p of, let's see, 1.1 um, is going to be approximately equal to, if we plug this into a calculator, we get about six, uh, or 0 0.639. And p of, um, let's see, 1.01. It's going to be approximately um, 0 0.0513. And P of 2 um, says it will be approximately, well, sounds a little bit different, 31.389. So notice that we can't really do a strict comparison like we had before. I mean, when we found, say, the Taylor series for a sine or cosine or e to the x, we could plug those in and find you know, fairly, or very precise values from our calculator. Well, we can't really do that with this because we don't have a closed form expression for p of x. And this is, p of x is defined by the power series. We don't know, we have no other way of computing it other than just you know, using you know, a certain number of terms from the power series. Uh, but we can say whether or not an estimate um, should be closer to the expected value or not. Um, for example, we know that um, we know what the interval of convergence is. So we know that if we go out you know, far enough, we can get arbitrarily close to the real value. Uh, far enough meaning we just take more and more terms in the power series, or uh, right, more and more terms in the power series. So the interval of convergence is um, one plus or minus a fifth. Um, and of course, we're uncertain about the endpoints because we haven't tested that. But we see that you know one point one is certainly within the interval um, four fifths to six fifths, which is same as point eight to one point two. Uh, same with one point zero one. So we can expect that um, both p of one point one and p of one point zero one will be close or the, that these estimates will be close to the actual values. Um, however, p of 2 is not at all within this interval, um, and that probably explains why this is so much different than these other two. I mean, it doesn't seem, the whole function doesn't seem to be doing a lot, and then all of a sudden when we get to p of 2, it just kind of shoots up. That's probably just because we're outside the interval of convergence. But we can't say with certainty that these are fairly close and we could figure out how close just by taking more and more um, or more and more terms in, in the power series to estimate those better.